Today, we will be measuring thermocouple cable with the Moore CT100B TDR. Let's get started. Always remember to properly discharge static before connecting to any high-frequency test equipment and never connect to live equipment. Before we get started, there are some important things to consider. This video is about measuring thermocouple cables, more precisely, thermocouple extension cables. An active or shorted thermocouple cable will effectively generate voltage, making it an active device. Connecting shorted or soldered thermocouple cables to the CT100B is highly discouraged, as it has the potential to generate voltage and damage the unit. Extra care must be taken to ensure that there is no voltage being generated by the thermocouple cable with the multimeter in addition to shorting before connecting to the CT100B. A thermocouple is a temperature measuring device consisting of two wires of different metals joined at each end. The temperature difference causes an electromotive force or voltage known as the Seebach effect that is proportional to the difference between the temperatures of the two junctions. For this video, we will be showing type K thermocouple cable, which happens to be the most common because of its wide temperature range and overall low cost. However, these principles apply to all forms of thermocouple cable. With our sample already connected to an adapter, after checking with a multimeter to verify that there's no voltage being produced, I'm then shorting the end with a shorting cap and connecting to the CT100B. We are not going to be able to use the auto fit function since this cable behaves as a capacitor, as we will see as I zoom out here in a bit. I'm placing the first cursor on the adapter. I can then unplug and plug in the adapter to verify. Zooming out, you can see the steady rise in impedance starting from 63 to 86 ohms at the end of the 16-foot cable with our VP of 0.616. Now I'm going to kick things up a bit, by a lot actually. This is also Type K, just a heavier gauge dual-paired spool that is 1,030 feet. We are connecting just one of the two pairs of leads with the Moore CT100 DABW1 with the internal ballon coil and a more test lead to make things easier to work with. I'm going to first find the start of the cable with cursor 1 at the adapter. Then I'm going to zoom out, way out. Notice the low VP of 0.355. That's nearly half the VP I've demonstrated most cables at. And since the TDR measures in time, it sees this as a long cable. Switching to cursor 2, now that I'm out where the end should be, you can see that there isn't a whole lot of difference between the end of the cable and an open circuit. This is common with lossy systems and is due to the capacitance of this cable and it's showing high resistance near the end here at nearly 550 ohms. I can detect the end by applying a brief short to the end and there's a slightly noticeable drop going on where in most cases we would see a sharp drop. I'm going to scan the trace so we can see a difference. Pressing scan, start scan, then select the active trace. I'll short the end again, and you can watch it diverge from the scan trace. This is where the end of the cable is. I'm going to increase the gain so we can see it better, making sure that I increase the gain on the scan trace and the active trace at the same rate. Switching back to the active trace, I short the end again. Now you can see the difference in more detail. I'll move the cursor out past the end so the impedance difference will show better. And there you have it, thermocouple cable with the Moore CT100B TDR. Be sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel for more updates. Check out our website at moretm.com, give us a call or shoot us an email, and we'll see you next time.